The howitzer is a type of cannon that is mobilized with the use of vehicles, for the cannon itself is immovable. Artilleries can be classified into a gun, a mortar, and a howitzer based on their firing formats. A gun is long-barreled and fires at low angle. A mortar is short-barreled and fires at high angle. A howitzer has a relatively shorter barrel than a gun, and fires at mid-angle within the angle range of a gun and a mortar. Artilleries can also be classified by their mobility a fixed cannon, a towed gun, and a self-propelled cannon. A fixed cannon is installed to protect important facilities with its unmoving weaponry. A towed gun is a type of cannon that can be dragged by vehicles. A self-propelled cannon has its own power source within the cannon itself and can move on its own. Of all howitzers, one that needs to be hauled in order to be mobilized is called a towed howitzer. In modern days, most howitzers in use are typically all towed howitzers. First, let us have a look at the structure of a 155mm howitzer. A cannon tube, through which shells are fired, holds a muzzle brake at the front. In many cases, a cannon tube consists of a barrel and a breech mechanism combined with accessories such as a muzzle brake. Altogether, it is called a cannon assembly. A muzzle brake lessens the cannon recoil. Above the cannon tube is a recoil mechanism. It absorbs the cannon recoil and returns the pushed back cannon tube to its original place. At the rear side of the cannon tube is a breech ring. Inside, there is an obturator and an obturator pad. A cylinder-shaped cradle upholds the cannon tube. Underneath the cradle is a top carriage, and this supports equipment that are situated above. A bottom carriage bolsters top carriage and above. A trail helps to stabilize cannon from the recoil and is attached to vehicles when need to be mobilized. Now let us look at each equipment more in depth. A cannon tube is where shells are fired. A powder chamber is where shells are loaded and fired, and this creates enormous explosion gas. Behind a powder chamber is a breech recess, a void in which a breech block and an obturator fit in. A bore bears a clockwise rifling which spins the shells. At the end of the cannon tube is a muzzle brake. A projectile can get though its hold, and there is also a baffle. The main purpose of a muzzle brake is to attenuate the recoil force. When shells are fired, the pressure from the exploding gas retreats a cannon assembly. This is a recoil, and the power created is called a recoil force. As shells exit a muzzle brake, explosion gas will also come out, and this gas will disperse into the air as it hits the baffle. Gas hitting the baffle applies frontward energy, mitigating the recoil force. Behind the cannon tube is a cylinder-shaped breech ring. Inside is a breech block, and in the middle is an obturator. A breech block is connected to a carrier and is rotated to open and close. A 105mm howitzer has casings which shut off the gas pressure from firing shells. However, a 155mm howitzer uses separate loading ammunitions which do not use casings. Therefore, the gas pressure from firing shells is delivered to the powder chamber, as is. An obturator blocks this gas from flowing further backwards. In front of an obturator is the round-shaped head of a spindle, and to the back is a front split ring and an obturator pad. A disc at the far rear lessens friction between a breech block and an obturator. As shells are fired, forcible explosion gas applies pressure on the spindle, and a pad in the middle also becomes momentarily exposed to pressure. The pad expands until it seals tightly, so that there is no space for gas to leak. It shrinks back to its original size as pressure drops. A breech block used is an interrupted screw type which is both heavy and sturdy, in order to withstand the explosion gas. If you take a look at the breech block, there are screw-shaped slots. On a breech recess, in which breech blocks fit, slots are carved the opposite way, and this allows for the screws to connect even with slight turns, closing up quickly. Behind it is a firing mechanism. 
it uses firing mechanism assembly. First, insert a primer and lock the firing mechanism assembly to its firing location. Then, the string is pulled to ignite the primer. The flame of the primer moves along the bottom of the bore and ignites gunpowder. A breech mechanism is a hefty piece of metal, so it is not easy to open and close at high angles. A counterbalance mechanism helps operating a breech block. Although the breech block is heavy to close, a spring inside helps by constantly applying a pulling force. The explosion gas that forms from firing a shell holds substantial force. This force allows for shells to fly forward, and the counteraction of the force puts pressure on the cannon in turn. If the pressure is not duly controlled, the cannon will severely be pushed backwards or bounced upwards. If so, it can be cumbersome as you need to reposition the cannon to the original position, and as the cannon tube may suffer from mechanical failures due to gas pressure. The equipment that mitigates this pressure is called recoil mechanism. When a shell is fired and the cannon assembly retreats, the oil inside the recoil cylinder absorbs the energy. As the recoil mechanism absorbs the created force, the cannon assembly slowly comes to a stop. The cannon assembly, which has been moved backwards, has to be brought back to its original place, and the part that serves this function is called counter-recoil mechanism. As the cannon tube falls backwards, the oil inside the recoil mechanism runs towards the counter-recoil mechanism through a connected tube. The gas inside the counter-recoil cylinder becomes more and more compressed, and as the cannon tube halts recoiling, the compression rebounds the cannon tube forward. The 155mm Hoetzer does not have recoil mechanism and counter-recoil mechanism attached. Inside a recoil cylinder is a piston, and a piston rod which is filled with oil. A piston has a hole for oil to pass through. A piston rod is connected to a breech ring and retreats when shells fire. When piston retreats, the oil absorbs the energy. A cylinder rod inside a counter-recoil cylinder is also connected to a breech ring, and oil moves into the recuperator as the rod retreats. The gas compresses, and as the recoil comes to a stop, the compressed gas expands, pushing the cannon tube forward. The 155mm Hoetzer's recoil mechanism is an upgraded version of that of the 105mm. When shells are fired, piston rods in both the recoil mechanism and counter-recoil mechanism retreats. Oil pressure is formed as the piston in the recoil mechanism falls back, steadily absorbing the energy from the explosion gas. The piston in the counter-recoil mechanism compresses the nitrogen gas as it falls back. And as the recoil stops, the compressed nitrogen gas expands to push forward the cannon tube. A howitzer's recoil distance depends on the angle of the cannon tube. As the angle of the cannon tube rises, it is more and more possible for the breech mechanism to hit the ground. Therefore, when firing high angle, the recoil distance must be kept short. The components that support the cannon are the sleigh, the top carriage, and the bottom carriage. The sleigh provides direct support to the cannon, and the recoil mechanism is included inside. The cradle holds up the sleigh, working as a rail for the cannon, and the recoil mechanism to move around. The top carriage supports the cradle and can be rotated around a pintly. Finally, the bottom carriage bolsters the top carriage. The 155mm Hoetzer's cradle wraps around the cannon tube like a cylinder. A top carriage upholds the cannon tube and the recoil mechanism etc. and rotates around the pintly. The bottom carriage, connected to the axle, supports the top carriage and all other equipment above it. Pandan is very hefty and extensive, and so maintaining the overall balance is important. If you pick up this long and heavy weapon vertically perpendicular to the ground, you can maintain the overall balance with little force only. However, as the cannon tilts, more power and energy are required. That is why it is relatively easier to maintain balance with little power only at high angle than at low angle. Using a device called the equilibrator, you can keep the balance of the cannon steady.
An equilibrator is either spring-typed or air-pressure-typed which uses gas. As the cannon retreats, the nitrogen gas inside is compressed. The compressed gas holds counterforce to expand, which halts too rapid a descent. Also, the gas will help the cannon bounce back up through expansion. The spring type is similar in that it uses the compression and expansion of the spring. A 155mm Hoetzer has two equilibrators, left and right one each. As the cannon descends, the gas is compressed. The compressed gas then is filled with the counterforce to expand, which stops the rapid descent. This expanding force also helps the cannon to ascend back. There are four types of elevating mechanism, rack assembly, screw assembly, hydraulic cylinder assembly, and hydraulic motor assembly. By turning the handwheel, the interlocking gear is also turned, setting the elevating mechanism in process. A traversing mechanism is either a screw assembly or a rack assembly. As the handwheel attached to the top carriage is turned, the power is transferred, and the gear is rotated enabling the cannon to move left and right. Underneath the cannon is a firing support. A firing support is used when need to fire stably by lifting the wheel above ground, for Hoetzer's wheels are liable to bounce up when firing. The firing support has a firing jack, an octagonal firing platform and a circular firing platform. A firing jack is installed to the bottom carriage and lifts the wheels when firing. Three parts are in contact to the ground when firing a firing jack and two trails behind. At the rear part of the Hoetzer, there is long device called a trail. It serves to send the shock from firing to the ground so that the cannon can remain in position stably. The spade at the tip of the trail firmly holds the weapon when firing. The trail can also be used to mobilize a cannon when the end of it is connected to a vehicle for transportation.